tonight, where we will have our guests from Chicopee Town tonight. Before we get into our senior night festivities, we would like to begin tonight by acknowledging the hard work and commitment of the Frontier Boys Middle School soccer team. The team had a very successful season, finishing with a record of 12-0 and and outscoring their opponents 63-18 en route to their perfect season. These middle school players are proving that Frontier Soccer will continue to be a competitive and successful program for years to come. The middle school team was coached by Tom Robinson. Middle school, congratulations. At this time, we would like to acknowledge the Chicopee Comp seniors playing tonight. First, number 10, Brian Atimbo. Number 14, Andrew Boyer. Number 9, Mike Nabo. Number 19, Joseph Klaus. Number 12, Griffin Langlois. Number 11, Benjamin Laxton. Number 22, Caleb Paquette. Number 21, Christian Samigal. Number 7, Mason Stepo. Number four, Tristan Tolliver. And number 16, Graham Toper. We would now like to honor and recognize the Frontier Seniors. First, number two, Tim Barrington. Tim is escorted by his father, Bill Barrington, and sister, Ashley. Tim has been a member of the varsity for three years. His most memorable moment was winning the 2016 Western Mass Championship. His message to the underclassmen on the team, carry the team to more success. Tim will be attending a four-year college next year. Number 22, Ryan Loveland. Ryan is escorted by his parents, Pam and Paul. This is Ryan's third year with the varsity squad. His most memorable moment at Frontier was winning the 2016 Western Mass Championship. Ryan will be attending college next fall in Western Mass. He hopes that he can find time to come back to watch and support the future development of the program. Ryan's parting words for the team, put everything out on the field, boys, and never let anything get in the way of your goal. Our next senior, number five, Kip Newman. Kip is escorted by his parents, Sarah and Tom. Kip has been a member of the varsity team for three years. His most memorable moment while playing for Frontier was Tiwi screaming, yay Hawks, before every game. Kip plans to attend college next year. Kip's message for the underclassmen, keep on winning, boys. Number 17, Ari Venegas. Ari will be escorted by coaches Joe Barrett and Evan Horton. Ari is a three-year member of the varsity squad. Ari's most memorable moment was scoring two goals in a home night game. Ari will be handing, uh, heading off to college next year to begin medical studies. He is also planning to travel to France to study the language and culture there. To the underclassmen, always trust in yourself when you play and play confident but always make sure you have fun as a team. There is no other way to play. I can see the monster potential in all of you. Tiki Taka, squad out. Yeah. Our next senior, number nine, Connor Bagden. Yeah. Connor is escorted by his parents, Gene and Joseph. This is Connor's second year with the varsity team after spending his freshman and sophomore years with the New England Revs Academy. Connor serves as one of our four senior captains and was selected to the All-Western Mass team his junior year. His most memorable moment playing for Frontier was calling Billy's first goal on the first touch of his career. His parting words to his teammates, let's do everything we can to win a title this year together, but whatever happens, I know that all of you, no matter how goofy you all are, have it in you to be leaders and keep this program at the top. I'll miss you all. Next senior, goalkeeper number 69, Peter Bronke. Peter is escorted by his parents Jeff and KC and his brother Dan. Peter is a three-year member of the varsity team and has been a captain for the past two years. 
He was selected to the All-Western Mass team as a junior last year. Peter's most memorable moments have been winning Western Mass as a sophomore and building a family out of the soccer team. Peter plans to attend college next year and will participate in ROTC while there. To the underclassmen, always be open to growing as a player and, a and as a team. Have fun and work hard. Good luck next year. Our next senior, number 19, Doug Haneski. Doug is escorted by his parents, Julie and Mike. During his four year, Doug is a four year member of the varsity program. His most memorable moment was winning Western Mass as a sophomore. Doug will be attending college next year to study business. And our next and last senior, number four, Noah Jocks. Noah is escorted by his parents, Michael and Dorothy. Noah is a three-year member of the varsity squad and serves also, and also serves as one of our four senior captains. Noah is planning on attending college after graduation. His most memorable moment at Frontier was winning Western Mass as a sophomore. His message to the underclassmen is never lose sight of where you are headed. Great things can be accomplished with the cooperative effort of a dedicated team. Soccer may be just a game, but to Frontier it means so much more than that. Our senior class of 2018, good luck in your future endeavors. <laughs> Coach Horton writes, this group of seniors were freshmen in the Frontier program as it began its most successful run of seasons in school history. They understand what it takes to win at the highest level and they have done that their very best to instill that mentality to the underclassmen. As an incoming first year coach to one of the most successful and competitive programs in Western Mass, I could not have asked for a better group of young men to help me get a foothold and gain confidence in leading this talented group of players. I am eternally grateful for everything that you've done for me and this program over the past few months. My only regret is that I only got one year to work with all of you. I hope that as the years go by, you will continue to look back fondly on your time on the pitch with your friends and brothers. Just know that you always have a home here at Frontier Soccer, and there, if there is anything I can ever do for you in the future, just say the word. I wish you all the best as you move, move forward to the next chapter of your lives. We would now like to introduce both teams. First, we'd like to introduce the Chicopee Comp Reserves. Number 14, Andrew Boyer. Number 9, Mike Nobo. Number 13, Kobe Carlson. Number 15, Gabriel Mijal. Number 5, Cameron Buzver. Backup goalie, number 27, Mason Caravo. Number 30, Yadrian Martinez Burgos. Number 20, Derek Quenville. Number 17, Jaden Tolliver. Number 2, Joshua Witeka. Number 6, David Jurisov. Number 23, Nathan Hanna and number 24, Carson Langlois. Now for the comp starters. Number 10, Brian Atimbo. Number 19, Joseph Klaus. Number 12, Griffin Langlois. Number 11, Benjamin Lixton, Laxton. Number 22, Caleb Paquette. Number 21, Christian Samigal. Number seven, Mason Stepno. Number four, Tristan Tolliver. Number 16, Graham Toper. Number 18, Marcel Chavez. And number three, Dominic Polta. Now for the Frontier Reserves. Number three, Emmett McGranahan. Number six, Tanner Finch. Number seven, Victor McNutt. 
Number eight, Tom Kirkalonis. Number 10, Connor Waitkus. Number 12, Jim Woolley. Number 13, Sam Batista. Batisti. Number 15, Sam Felton Emmerich. Number 16, Karen Bright. Number 20, Gates Tuttle. Number 21, Elliot Johnson. Number 24, Sam Mackin. Number 98, Nick Jarvis. And double zero, James Morgan. Now for no, the Red Hot starters. In goal, number 69, Peter Bronke. Number two, no, no, Tim no, no, Barrington. Number four, Noah Jocks. Number five, Kip Newman. Number nine, Connor Bagdon. Number 11, Ethan DeMeo. Number 14, Tenzin Sendu. Number 17, Ari Venegas. Number 18, Ben Morse. Number 19, Doug Haneski. And number 22, Ryan Loveland. Pretty Dan Graves, Esquire. The Airfield's town moderator. He's a practicing attorney. Call his Marine Field office at 773 for all your legal needs. Body sees DJ service for the best motor disc jockey in the valley for five years running. Book your next party now at bodycdjservice.com. Holiday Pizza in the center of South Vietnam. Holiday Pizza is the official pizza. Frontier Community Access Television. Join us for the first time to brand new underwriting. Rebs America's Yarn Store in Northampton. Kathy and Steve Upton is a longtime Deerfield resident and supporter of local athletics. Visit them at yarn.com and Cheslick's Market in the center of South Deerfield. Great coffee, snacks, and great lunch specials, too. Go see Nicole and the, and the gang today at Cheslick's Market in the center of South Deerfield. Alright ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to Frontier Community Access Television's coverage of your Frontier Regional School Red Hawks against the Chicopee Comp Colts. Tonight's a big one to say the least for Frontier. The squad is honoring seven seniors tonight on their last home game. And they are also playing for league championships, so to say the least, the stakes could not be higher tonight. The Red Hawks have already clinched a playoff berth. But are still working on their seed for the postseason, so we'll see how that works out tonight. I'm Alex Sharp, and I'll be joined in a bit by Carson Carey, who's running a little late tonight. Some brisk temperatures tonight here in South Deerfield, but the players are ready to go, and we'll be underway in just a bit. So seven seniors for the Red Hawks. We'll all be in the starting lineup tonight. And as soon as they're out there, I'll try to list them off for everyone. But seven is a lot to remember off the top of my head. Red Hawks got off to a bit of a shaky start this year. After three consecutive seasons with deep tournament runs, two Western Mass finals, two Western Mass championships, and last year ended in heartbreak in the semifinals to Southwick, who went on to win the Western Mass finals. The two teams are out on the, on the pitch. Huddling up one final time. It's 6.36. And we will be underway in a moment. So those Frontier seniors tonight, we've got Peter Bronke in goal, Ryan Loveland, Starting on the left wing, Doug Haneski, Kip Newman, Ari Venegas, Connor Bagdon, and Timmy Barrington, all playing either the forward or midi positions. And Noah Jocks in the right back in the right defensive role. Gets right underway. Bagdon over to Newman. Plays it back into the middle to Bagdon. Sets it over to the wing to Jocks. And that'll go out. It'll be a Colts throw in here. And 
nice throw in, but it goes right to Morse. Magnum plays a nice header into Haneski, who bombs it over to the Chicopee Comp keeper. He'll have no problem with that. Comp controls the ball. Morse smartly lets it out of bounds. It'll be a throw in for Jocks. And there's the throw. Newman whiffs and it goes over to the Colts. But there'll be another throw in right here. We'd like to acknowledge and thank the players from the Waitley and Conway wreck that are Neske gets helping over to back run our lines to tonight. Jocks. Thank you very much. There's Neske. Frontier trying to string some passes together here. It's a chilly night here in Frontier Regional School. Just under 40 degrees. A lot of the players out here are electing to wear the long tights under their shorts. Certainly more boys players doing it than the girls players were last night, even though the temperatures were right around the same. There's Loveland, one of the seniors. Plays it off his teammate there. Boy, that could have been dangerous. Bronke, the keeper in the back, with a great job clearing out. There's Bagdon. Benegas in the center. Tries to get it back, he does. There's Ethan DeMeo. Vineski with a nice pass over to Ari. Ari Benegas. Bagdon had a nice run going in the middle, but his teammate couldn't find him there. Here's Jocks. Nice throw and finds Venegas. Gets his right foot on it to Bagdon. Bagdon shoots. Blocked by the Colts. Ooh. DeMeo with a great attempt at a header into the back of the net. But a nice save by the Chickabee Comp keeper. A nice early, a nice early chance for Frontier. DeMeo, a junior, has been one of the leading forwards on this team. And now here we've got Karsten Carey. <laughs> Fashionably late. But you know what they say, better late than never. And here comes the corner. It'll be taken by Kip Newman. Wow, it's cold tonight. <laughs> Good to be here. Pardon my... Uh, Newman pops it up. Absence for the first five minutes this player. game. Oh! Vanessa got a boot on it. But the comp keeper makes another nice save. All right, so Alex, if you could recap the last five minutes of this game. <laughs> and here comes Sam Felton Emmerich. That would be great. Oh, so far... Pretty even match so far, Karsten, with Frontier putting on a little pressure in the late last couple minutes. Two good chances on goal. One nice save by Bronke. There's the corner. And there's Loveland. Gets it taken. Loveland getting a start for senior night, correct? Yeah, all seven seniors are here in the starting lineup. Here comes the throw in. It'll be interesting to see how long Coach Evan Horton of the Red Hawks, who's going to keep this seven senior lineup in. Normally, some of these guys are, n are not as much of the mainstays of the rotation. But he may ride them tonight. There's the throw in. Nice header there. And now Comp bringing it back. Frontier trying to set something up. Great play in the middle to Bagden. We'll send up to Aneski. Oh, 
All right, here comes Bronke. Big boot across the half court. So I don't know half if you've field. mentioned this, but uh, Frontier looking for some serious vengeance tonight after a painful defeat early on in the season to this great comp team. Bagdon wound up with the left foot there, but just couldn't get it past his defender. And also, the stakes are high tonight, playing for the league championship and the seeding. Yeah, this Moriarty League is no, no kidding around. Could potentially get a home playoff game if they come out victorious tonight. If they lose, it's really not looking, not looking good. There's a kick in from Comp. Easily collected by Bronke. Bronke snags those in his sleep. Ben the keeper on two Western Mass Championship teams already. Yeah, to be honest, I couldn't even tell you who the last Frontier soccer keeper was. Or maybe one, actually. I think Dylan Houston may have oh, been the starting right. goalie on the first team. There's Ivan Agus. Puts a nice shot oh. on. Oh! A nice skipping shot by Venegas. Yeah, Barrington looking to catch that rebound and put it in the back of the net, but keeper, great job being fast and getting on top of that ball. <laughs> and now Ooh, Comp with something going towards run. the goal. Nice recovery there. Nice recovery by Sam Felton Emmerich on that one. Looked like he might have been beat. Yeah, Felton Emmerich doing a great job to physically contain his forward. Here comes the corner. Nice clearance there. Oh, wow, great diving, diving defense by Jocks. And Barrington will clear it out. This soccer senior class well represented in the superlatives of the senior class. We've got most likely to be late to graduation, Connor Bagdon. Uh, we've got Timmy Barrington, most likely to brighten your day. And we've got Ryan Loveland, most school spirit. Wow, and I'd say all three of those supporters are well earned. And I heard maybe Bronky got light for the party, but that is not confirmed. I can confirm it. All Bronky right, got you've got four. <laughs> <laughs> but I tell you, Bagdon is one of the key players. He may want to be late to graduation, but he can't be late to this game tonight. <laughs> no, and it's good to see that he showed up. <laughs> because his absence would be sorely missed. <laughs> Tell Nemo clears it out. It'll be a throw. Yeah, great job making sure that isn't a corner. The comp calls for keeping some pressure on here. Here comes a throw in. Ooh. Ooh. Bobbling around in there. Good back by back. Clear it. There's Newman. Neither team really stringing together too many passes here in the early going. No, Haneski doing a great job. He uses body to isolate that defender from the ball. And I'd say he gets that from hockey a little bit. Making yeah. sure to use his shoulders in the most efficient way possible. For a few years now, we've seen him really excel in, in the passing game and just really control the tempo of the game almost from the midfield position. Yeah, he certainly has an effect that very few players can uh, replicate. There's Loveland. Tries to clear it, goes right to a comp player. Yeah, comp can, can set something up now. They have it in the middle. Oh, and that's going to hit the back of the net. Nothing Bronke could have done about that. That was a beautiful shot into the left corner. Goal. 
Tom doing a great job getting out up the side and then bringing it into the middle, which we know is the most dangerous place for the ball to be. And coming off the post, if you're Bronchi, not much you can do about that. And Cindy will come right in after that to replace Sam Fell and Emmerich. Yeah, just a nice pass. It ran right to the guy and put it right into the left corner. Bronchi gave it a great attempt, but you give good players shots like that, and more often than not, they're going to be able to capitalize. Guy one. So the goal scorer on that was number seven for the Colts, assisted by number 16. Mason Stepno on the goal. And then Bagden thought he might have the keeper off his line a little bit and just skied a shot right off the. Bold move. Uh, <laughs> I've seen it <laughs> pay off before, but why not? Yeah, nothing to lose, really. There's Loveland. He puts it over. Just a little out of Barrington's range. Chickapee comp goal in the 10th minute. Scored by number 7, Mason Stepno. Assisted by number 16, Graham Topher. He had so much room there, and he elected to pass it off instead. Sometimes you just got to dribble within the open field. Yeah, Comp having some trouble stringing together uh, a skew of passes. And Frontier also having that trouble early on. So both teams putting great pressure on the person who has the ball. It's bagged in. Some physicality. Goes both ways, though. Yeah, good no call by the ref. He's great pass in the middle. Oh. You don't see that kind of pass from Vineski very often. No, it looks like Nesky just <laughs> didn't see the defender right there. Here's Barrington. Nesky got a shot. And he'll sky it over the net. Not Hineski, DeMeo. Yeah, that ball had a little bounce to it, and he got right under it. A good look, though. All the comp bench players electing to stand. The Frontier Regional players electing to sit. So Barrington will come out for Kirk Alonis on that left side. Comp clearly given some wind in their sails by that fantastic goal. Again, looking for Kirk Alonis at the side. Great intercept by the comp defender. Loveland will step up. He'll give it to Aneski in the middle. And he'll go. Coach Evan Horn telling Aneski every time. So that's clearly a yeah. shot that he's yeah, comfortable he's with. He's taking, taking that shot. Just tailed off a little to the right there. Yeah, this comp back line is certainly strong. They are rock solid right now. Frontier down 1-0, but they've had more chances, I'd say, so far. Yeah, I've definitely seen the ball in comps half the field more than Frontiers. Here comes the goal kick. Yes, Neski. Newman plays it off his head as well. Neski, he's got space. Some sneaky speed from Maneski. They're going to have a throw in. And that's in there. It'll come out to Haneski. Pop it up. Nice pass. Will somebody get a foot oh. on it? Venegas with a chance, potentially. Just not quite able to get a foot on it. <sighs> Deep side relief from the comp side of the field. Yeah, a very tense exchange right there.
Here comes the kick. And the ref sees something he doesn't like. Yeah, Newman playing with a little too much hands there. So comp, they're going to try and get it in there. Yeah, certainly within the range. Nice ball. That'll be a goal kick. I believe Morris will take it. And so number 12, Willie, will come on for Venegas. And Barrington will come on for Newman. Oh, great ball by Bagman, but couldn't be corralled by Willie. Caleb Loveland. Sitting next to Ryan Loveland in physics. He was pumped to say the least for this one. Yeah, I mean, winning that school spirit was no mistake. Yeah. Here he'll throw it in. Yeah, Wooly for Frontier, a uh, valuable addition to the team this year. He did not see much time at the beginning of the season, but he's seen his role certainly increase as the year has gone on. The mail will clear that one out. And so Comp will make a few substitutions. Horton's still riding his seniors here tonight. Bronky calls for it, picks it up. Wow, spot on throw from Bronky. And Haneski, not a fan of that call. <laughs> Red Hawks really seem to be communicating well tonight. Lots of talking on there, on the field. Loveland looking for a substitution, it seems, favoring that right leg. So Felton Emmerich will approach the halfway line. Jocks clears it out. Chick will gain possession, though. Yeah, Jocks is a real gritty defender back there. Oh, nice off save. the deflection. Nice Great save, save back here. And that ball changes up the last one. Yeah. <laughs> that can be a real hard save. Yeah, you gotta have a lot of focus there. Looking for the shot, it looks like. Yeah. Mayo gets lost. Yeah, play it out now. Bronky calls him off. That one. There'll be frontier ball with the kick. Looks like Cindy will take it. Or Ben Morris. Try to get into the box here. A little low. Comp will attempt a counter. They've got a guy on the corner. Here they come. 
Nice play by DeMeo. DeMeo with a run up the left side. And he's got some space. What can he do? His teammate. Oh, just not a good touch. There's Haneski. And that chance is spoiled. The ball fell at Willie's feet, but he just wasn't able to get his foot around it. Loveland takes that hard off the noggin. And Bronke should be able to take care of this one. Or not. <laughs> yeah, it looks like more so just step in. Not risk anything. Pressure on. He was fine. <laughs> like seeing out on the track. Seriously, what's he doing on in the spring? Although this is the last you'll see of these 17 years on the soccer field tonight at home. Certainly contributing in other sports here at Frontier. See Haneski out on the rink. Yeah, he'll be looking to get that 100-point club in hockey. Barrington will be out on the basketball court. And Wankus. Oh, no, he's a junior. Back on the track, though. Yeah, Wankus on the diamond. Yeah, but not quite a senior. No. And there's Wankus looking to check in. So DeMeo had it. Comp unsuccessful in the last few uh, and here few comes attacks Rangus. they've put together. Almost getting to it there. Good intuition by Josh. Jux. Throw. Frontier team really tenacious these last few minutes, going for every single ball. Yeah, they certainly know what's at stake tonight. Yep, they've been in this position many times. Last year, had some struggles early on, but were able to recover and go pretty far in the postseason. Yeah, losing in a very close game to Southwick, who went on to win the West Mass Finals. Yeah, and I believe they got to the they got to the state finals as well. But they did lose some key members of that team in Zach Hamilton, Tyler Mayran, Ethan LaFleur, yeah. Ben Arnold, for sure. Georgita. But losing even more this year. Seven guys. More in numbers, anyway. Yeah, so it'll be very interesting to see how the program can recover with a, who will be, a coach who will be in his second year and a lot of players that did not experience the uh, Western Mass Championships. Yeah. So Comp doing a great job at passing right now. Gotta love to see this if you're the coach. And you know, during the senior day celebrations earlier, they were always they're always nice and I always enjoy them. 
But I was just thinking to myself, when is senior day for the, these soccer senior broadcasters? <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know, I think it might be tonight. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Wow, the crowd looking good tonight. Yeah, no doubt. The football game might have taken away a bit of the student body, but... Yeah, certainly the football players and plenty of the parents who will usually come out and support the soccer players. Good yeah, expect throw. this place to be jumping if we get a home, home postseason game. Yeah, silence so far tonight, though. The 1-0 deficit, but... The goal goes in. I don't know if we'll be able to hear ourselves think. <laughs> Let's hope not. <laughs> Here comes the throw. Rocky punches it out. Good nice punch play. Rocky in. Yep. They saw the elbow come out. All the seniors, Bronchi may be the most important to this team. Always directs the defense back there and is just totally calm under pressure. Yeah, a great leader for sure. Part of the reason why he's uh, captain. Yeah, right after that goal went in earlier, we saw him immediately start clapping and encouraging his teammates to get the next one. That's what you love to see. Oof. Barrington, that would have been something. Jeez. Yeah, with his off foot there. That's right. So you got it just a little bit on the outside, outside of his foot. Yeah, this weather may be cold tonight, but I think this is just great. New England fall weather. <laughs> this is exactly what you love to be playing sports in. This is what breeds toughness. <laughs> yeah, because it's not pleasant, but that's what makes it fun. When you have everybody suffering a little and you can share that suffering with everyone, it makes it so much more enjoyable. Unless you lose. Yeah. <laughs> That, that all sour the mood. <laughs> we'll get a throw in here. Looks like Felton Emmerich. Guy can try to do some damage. So calm. Wow, great takeaway by Sindhu. Oh, here's Nesky. Ah, oh, just couldn't get out to it. Magnum plays to the other side of the field to Barrington. Yeah, a little too high. I tell you, though, Barrington's got some ups. For sure. Didn't look like he would have been able to get ahead on that, but he did. Yeah, you can tell he's been doing the plyos. Yep. Goal kick from the comp keeper. Winkus, one of the fastest players on this team, trying to make something happen. Frontier doing a fantastic job getting it close to the Chickpea comp goal, but they just can't There's penetrate that last line. Over to Bagden, here's a chance. Oh, right and there. Goal. Oh, Haneski. Haneski with nearly an open goal. What a ball. I was, I, I was just about to stand out of my as you were going to get right there. My, oh my. Yeah, he had to react quickly as it just bounced up to him. And he got his foot on it, but he just put it over. I mean, in that situation, wow. all he had to do was yeah, just, just had to tap it. Just tap it. Yeah. You don't have to put any force on it. Ooh, I thought for sure we were going to see a spectacular goal. Yeah, well, that's good for Frontier, though. You see that this comp defense is, <laughs> is not invincible by any means. Yeah, that's at least three or four real solid chances. But wow, Nasky's going to want to have that one back. Yep, as long as they keep on getting chances, though, I'm confident that event eventually they'll capitalize. Nice header by Nasky. Mike is not quite able to get there. But now we have Chickabee Comp throwing. Bagden gets it forward to Jocks. Nice pass. Yeah, Jocks really coming up. 
use a little hesitation move there to pop it into the box. But yeah, that's great work by a defenseman. Earning them a corner. A good ball by Barrington. It's right Ooh. in there. Ooh, stays in there. I almost expected Popping to around. try and bicycle that. Ooh. Plays it out to Barrington. Just too far in front. Barrington likes to go to that left side. Gets it back in there. Ball is at the Mayo's feet. What can he do? He's holding he's it. Swarm. He's got to get to a teammate. Long. Nesky, and that'll get cleared out. Man, Frontier putting the pressure on. Yeah, and I really thought Nesky was going to go all the way and just try and bicycle that. Instead, he just tried to pop it back up and hope somebody could get ahead on it. And Tommy Kirkalonis will sub out. Comes to throw in. Got some great fans down here. <laughs> and I tell you, they uh, haven't gotten loud quite yet, but <laughs> who knows? I'm seeing some smiling faces down there, and we could see a little resurgence. Ooh, some yeah. contact. You saw the hands come out on that cop defender. Newman got the call. Oh, wow. Oh. <laughs> Must have been something we didn't see. Yeah, and that's a second foul on Newman. Yeah, he's and both I haven't actually really seen him do a whole lot. So I think he's been sneakily using yeah, his hands a little bit. I think there's been something a little sneaky going <laughs> Oh, fantastic oh, Bagden ball. making a run up the right side. Couldn't get it over to him, though. Oh, Ooh. Barrington. That call. Barrington screaming a little bit. I know this team has had a little bit of trouble with cards this year. Try not to get one tonight. Yeah, they've certainly had their fair share of bookings. <laughs> Great speed by Barrington, but that ball is way out there. Newman trying to plow his way through. Comp clears it out. Yeah, Frontier has had some real trouble against this Chicopee Comp defense. In the last outing, they weren't able to score. So yeah, but they've gotten they've gotten chances. They've certainly they've certainly been able to penetrate, but they haven't been able to get the ball in the back of the net. Yeah, it's that last piece of the puzzle that means everything. Under 10 minutes to go now in the half. Yeah, Chippy Comp taking out some real key players. Giving them a quick rest before the, the break. <laughs> Throw in. Mm, and now Comp looking yeah, to counter. Comp. Yeah, they got guys. Good job, Frontier's defenders to get their way back. Comp not happy with the no call. Uh, I believe Felton Emmerich being on the ground there. Swinging his feet. Comp's got it in the middle again. Looks like they're going to put something in there. Neski gets beat there. Yeah, Neski really unlucky on that one. Bagdon looks for Venegas, but that pass was going nowhere. Tomato takes it off the chest.
UFC something he doesn't like. Trying to put the ball somewhere over there. The Red Hawks can do something with it here. Maybe steal a goal for the half. Yeah, comp absolutely ferocious on clearing these balls. Just putting life and limb on the line to get them out of there. Good stop by Felton. Oh, here's a chance for Barrington. The comp defender will get there. Uh, for Barrington was offsides. Did you touch it though? No, but it's just a kick. Yeah. yeah, if the player's offsides and the kick goes even near him. He's really got to try to make sure Comp can't get a goal, and it would just be devastating to go in 2-0 oh, yeah, with all the chances they've had. Especially the momentum that it would give Comp heading into the second round. Here, Here comes Sam Battisti. Checking in for the waning minutes. Give Ethan DeMeo a break. Yeah, DeMeo doing a good job so far. the kick to be taken from. Yeah, that seems like a no. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Comp, they've got players standing outside of the 18, so they'll be running in. Yeah. And a comp player goes down inside the frontier goal. I don't think anyone touched him, though. Batisti holding his hands up. The ref says something to him. He's a hockey player. You don't, uh, you don't want to mess with Batisti <laughs> down there. Venegas, the only Frontier player not in the box. And that'll sail over the That's net. That's a wasted opportunity by Com. Great position to float it in and give their players a chance to use their height. Goal kick. And we're now in stoppage time here. And Eski finds Barrington who looks for Bagdon. Good takeaway by Eski. Call foul there. And the ref called that from the other side of the field. Sindhu trying to pop this one in. One last chance before the half. Oh. And it sailed right through there. No Frontier yeah. player to get a foot on it. Yeah, you get a good ball. You want someone to be in there to try to do something with it, but yeah, it was just low, a little out of position there. Enough. So both teams getting ready to go into this half. There's Jocks. Bagging just loses control of it. Neither team able to put something together in these waning seconds. 
Yeah, you gotta think the whistle's about to blow. Looks like they're going to get one more chance to put something in the Frontier 18. Ooh, that's, oh, that's dangerous. Oh, Ooh. nice save by Franke. Wow. What a highlight reel play there. Oh, and that had some lots of Man, some pressure from Comp. What a save by Bronchi there. Bronchi just Jeez. being an absolute leader for the defense right now. That first goal, really nothing you could do about it, but wow. he's already averted two more very, very close shots. Wow, Frontier lucky to be heading in 1-0. Yeah, on comp the back player. of their keeper right there. Comp player just glad they got the head, their head on it, but Bronchi somehow anticipated that, and his hand was right there. And we'll be back after this for what seems to be a very exciting second half. We'll look to see how Frontier can respond. Graves, Esquire, Deerfield's town moderator. He's a practicing attorney. You can call his Greenfield office at 773 for all your legal needs. Body sees DJ service for the best mobile disc jockey in the valley for five years running. Book your next party now at bodysees.djservice.com. Holiday Pizza in the center of South Deerfield. Holiday Pizza is the official pizza of Frontier Community Access Television. Joining us for the first time. Brand new underwriter, Rebs America's Yarn Store in North Hampton. Jackie and Steve Lovett, a long time Deerfield resident, and supporters of Denver Athletics. Visit them at yarn.com. And Cheslick's Market in the center of South Deerfield. Great coffee, snacks, and great lunch specials, too. Go see Nicole and the, the gang today at Cheslick's Market in the center of South Deerfield. Yeah! All right, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, we have a treat here tonight. Joined by the, one of the golf team senior members, and they have just qualified for the state tournament. Tell us a little bit about your season. Our season's going great. Uh, uh, as you just said, we made it to the state tournament for the first time in a very long time. Uh, uh, big key is just balance. Balance team, very deep. So, yeah. So, Kalen, what would you say to the people that walk around the halls of Frontier and say, golf's not a real sport? You know, I'll wear it. <laughs> um, but... You know, we're, we're the first team to qualify for states in the school. I'd say, you know, I personally, I'd say we're the best team uh, in the school right now. So people will say golf's not a sport. Uh, it's a hobby. You know, they can they can think what they want, but we're pretty successful. So. And so what can you tell me about the rest of the team? Who's Who's been hitting the ball well for you or whatever you want to call it in golf? Who's been, who's been stroking that golf ball well? Uh, we've all been we've all been uh, stroking pretty well. Uh, our number one through really one through six: uh, Mike, Brian, Gennar, Kyle, Rowan, myself. Uh, so it's all it's all going really well. All right. Any last messages you got for the viewers out here? Uh, light the candle and uh, good luck to Frontier tonight. All right, and there we have it. Thank you very much to Kalen Evans for joining us tonight in the booth. And now the second half will get underway here. Once again, my co-host Carson Carey is a little late. This time from the concessions. <laughs> Chicken Comp Colts will tee this one off. Frontier will look to keep up the defensive pressure here in the second half. There's Jocks. Far out in front of him. Yeah. 
Comp really liking to send their guys up the sideline. Once again, like to thank our youth players from the Waitley and Conway Rec that are helping run our lines tonight. Frontier really forced to put all their players back on defense because one more goal would totally sink their ship tonight. And Comp goes down. The bench not happy about it. Comp players slow to get out. Certainly some contact, but I believe that the ball was hit first. And it's well in. Nice stop by Sindhu. And it looked like he saved that. I suppose the ref has a bit of a better view than we do, though. It's well throw in. And that's in. No problem for Brownkey. Yeah, when you have a guy that can really huck a throw in, that's super valuable because on those sides, it pretty much becomes a corner. And Frontier really was able to do stuff with Ben Arnold doing that last year. We saw some success there. Yeah, Sindhu's jersey popping out a little bit, and you can see that comp is getting a little frisky with the hands. Sindhu is invaluable back there right now. He's got his head or foot on pretty much every single sent pass that Comp has done in this second half. So Loveland and Menegas on the sideline right now, on the track, keeping warm. We'll see if we get to see more of those seniors tonight. Yeah, Loveland not receiving a ton of minutes this year, but Venegas certainly seemed receiving some. Comp's planning something for this corner. They sure are taking their time here. And no wonder why. <laughs> and Sindhu once again getting his head on that. He's everywhere right now. Kirkalonis looking up. Can Willie really get to the ball? Smart move by the comp defense. Yeah, there's a to set up. Ooh, that was going right to Bagdon. I doubt he's too pleased that he got cut in front of there by DeMeo. Ooh! Kaneski with another chance. Kaneski came out of nowhere on that one, and it seemed for a second that he was going to drill that past the comp Coley. He did get a good shot on it. Yeah, certainly really some power, but once again, just a little over. And the chances just comp continue to pile up, and we've heard this from all of the players all year in the hallways, that they're just struggling to finish. And that can certainly be frustrating. Let's hope Frontier doesn't let that frustration get to them, get to them and they can maintain uh, composure and keep on getting these chances. Comp will clear it. Morse not able to stop it as much as he would like.
everybody back. Seems like this comp guy can sure sure hack it. Oh wow. Oh. And I wonder what the call was. Comp was one one foot in the way away from really drilling that in the back of the net again, I think. I mean, if you're in Bronchi's position, it's very hard to see the shot when it's coming from behind a bunch of people. Yeah, neither team devoid of opportunities at all tonight. And Comp is the only team that's so far been able to finish on them. Luckily, just once for the Frontier Red Hawks. Great boot by Morse. Yeah, he elevated that one a little bit more than the previous ones. <laughs> that was a little awkward. Yeah, from our angle, it looked like Peter Bronchi almost made a serious screw up. But luckily, it just went over the net. However, Comp will get a corner. Frontier fans will hold their breath on this one. Oh. Comp looked like they were just about to get their head on it before a Frontier defender was able to pop it up. Smart so, play by Felton Emmerich there to box out any opponents and let the ball fall out of bounds for a corner kick. I mean a goal kick. So Wakus will come in for Woolley as the striker. play. Spread out this field. <laughs> Bad then. Able to profit off his. Oh no. Barrington just slipping on the ground that time as he was trying to get to the pass. with all the pressure right now. Frontier really just being placed in a defensive role. I'm sure in this next half hour of play, the Red Hawks will get at least a couple good more chances. So as long as they keep it at a one, one goal game, they're gonna have a shot to at least tie this one up. Yeah, it all comes down to the defense right now to see if they can stand strong after that uh, screw up earlier on. Yeah, defense and finishing. They gotta, they gotta be able to put one away, or else this one's gonna end up in that one. Yeah, serious patience will be needed by Frontier to not try and rush this and make a mistake in the process. Frontier very unhappy with that call. Yeah, bagged it not, please. <laughs> Comp player stayed on the ground for a little bit, but is now up. That's what we call flopping. It seems <laughs> like it. Everybody does it, though. I have no idea. <laughs> I have 
Bagdon very confused with that call, still not letting go of it. Yeah, you gotta forget about it and move on. There's more important things at task here. Yeah, I can never get hung up on a call like that. will get a chance from uh, about 30 yards away from the goal. <laughs> Comp's got a lot of players inside. Frontier's got a lot of defenders. Ooh, ooh. Bit of contact there. Two players on the ground. Seems like it went both ways though. And that'll be a goal kick heading the other way. So Kirk Lonis will come off for Newman. Morris. Wow, an even bigger boost from Morris. That went about 60 yards, maybe more. Ooh. And Bagden arguing about the call instead of actually continuing to play. <laughs> and this guy, man, he's a star, but he got to start playing like it. Wait, kiss. Wow, a lot of people think it should have been a corner. Neither ref really wanted to make the call, it seemed like. And finally, the ref on the far side of the field pointed that it should be a goal kick. Some Frontier fans are not happy about that one. I don't think Coach Evan Horton was either. Now, 25 minutes left. Every single one of these decisions is going to be huge. Once again, the Red Hawks playing for at least a share of the league title with a win. Yeah, right now, Frontier tied with Central for the league. However... Ooh, nice play by Kit. And Comp in the same position as well. Ooh. Sindhu clears that one out. And Newman's going to act like he was pulled down, but come on. <laughs> we saw his arms go around. He's tried to get away with a few calls tonight. And However, I did not like how the uh, Comp player, after getting it stolen, hey man, he's just trying Sindhu, to protect himself. By Sindhu continue to run and actually ran into Sindhu. I mean, as a defender, you should not have to look out for that. <laughs> I thought you were commenting about the player that pulled Newman down after Newman pulled him down. But I got no problem with that. No, that was a good old, <laughs> a good old tussle. Right call by the ref. There's Sineski. Yeah, this game heating up a little bit. You can see, or you can hear, a lot more voices yeah. on the field. And a lot more whistles. There's some stress. Stress in the air out here. And so the, the ref blew his whistle, but play continued for about another 10 seconds. A lot of players were very what? confused. What is happening? And Bagden just screamed, what is going on? And I can't, I couldn't tell him. <laughs> I mean, this ref, he made the call, but then it seemed like he was content to <laughs> let the play go on. That's not quite how this works. Ooh. Ooh.
Barrington. Barrington plays it forward. It's going to come down to Bagman. Tries to flick a header to the teammate, but... Definitely putting some hands on Barrington, and he weathered it well with the ref was ready to blow the whistle on that one. Yeah, definitely one of the toughest players on any team he'll be on. And now this will set up a nice kick for the Red Hawks. Yeah, let's see who will take this. We have Morse, Bagden, Paneski, and Barrington all around it. And Paneski will be taking it. Ooh. There was a chance. It'll go out to a corner. So Bagden got his head on it, but just wasn't able to put it on goal. And Bronchi coming up to nearly halfway on the field, away from the goal. I mean, if you're comp and you get it on a breakaway, you might just want to <laughs> go for goal. Oh, another great chance. So Fountain Emmer able to get his head on it. And I think that would have gotten into the back of the net if it were for the keeper. I think so too. Keeper did a great job of getting his eye on it early and tra tracking it down. Barrington will have to run all the way to the other side to take another corner kick. Tries to strike it on goal. Yeah, at this point, 20 minutes left. Frontier really needs to start opening their um, opening the amount of chances that they can take. Taking a lot more. Yeah, they're certainly attacking as much as they can here, but just not able to capitalize on any of these opportunities. And it's really as simple as that so far in this game. If they had put away some of their chances, they might be up 2 3 1 right now. Yeah, a lot of what ifs, but in the end, scoreboard not lying. Tomeo just takes the touch a little bit too far off his body. Frontier really getting some fire under their feet right now. Moving quickly to every single ball, not wanting to waste a second of time. This comp player doing a great job of controlling this. And for the first time all game, comp will actually play it back. It does not work out for him. Mayo doesn't want to go to his left. Keeps going to the right, and that'll be a goal kick. Yeah, I think the Mayo holding on to it for a little too long. Yeah, you gotta either cross it in or cut it back to the middle at some point. Because otherwise your angle just slowly disappears. Yeah, and slowly more and more players will come out. And hard to beat those numbers. <laughs> Tom sticking with it. Cleared out by Morris. Yeah, Morris has been solid so far. Not making a whole lot of mistakes, which is the most you can ask for from a defender. And so this comp guy, I mean, this is pretty much a corner on this throw in. That'll be a goal kick for Bronchi. What? It looked like it went off the comp player, but I suppose there might have been a deflection at the last minute. Doesn't seem like Frontier no. was protesting that a whole lot. I thought for sure that went off the comp player. Yeah, Frontier putting absolutely everybody in the box right now. A goal would be devastating. Yeah, because then Com could just really pack it in and. Yeah. Bagman clears it out. Everyone breathes 
sigh of relief. And they go oh, down the attack. Oh, Vinasky. Vinasky's got a go. break. Oh, and he just misses the left side. And it seemed as though Vinasky could maybe have passed that oh. to the Frontier player running up the side. How many chances is Frontier going to get to put one in the back of the net, net tonight? Everyone stood on their feet for that chance. And a massive sigh of something afterwards. I do not know what to say at this point. No words. Frontier, you've done a fantastic job getting yourself in these positions. But at the end of the day, that's not what's going to be remembered. Haneski, <laughs> usually so reliable. And so this. This but crowd getting a little hot under the car. Yeah, and right I think now. honestly that's just a product of the frustration for all these misses. Yeah. Definitely. If a couple of these goals had gone in, there would not be any of this tension. Yeah, they gotta keep their heads under control and just try to pull one away. <sighs> Mentally for Neski, you just gotta Find a way to put this behind you and keep playing with the same intensity that you have been. Bronchi will get it. Yeah, good call by Bronchi. He's going to send it the other way. Bagdon has a chance. He's got four guys running right here. And the crowd is starting to get riled up. Plays it down to Vegas. Okay. Coach Norton not pleased with that call. I can't imagine he'd be pleased with much of anything tonight. set something up right now. About 15 minutes left in the game. Frontier has come up to with Frontier. Yeah, Frontier has come up with some uh, late, late miracles over the last couple seasons. 15 minutes to go. The clock is not with the Red Hawks right now. Wank is trying to hurl it. Swarming Bagden. He wants a call, doesn't get it. Yeah, at times the strength of these comp players is overwhelmed, Frontier. Send it. And it seems to always. Nice tackle. Ooh! And you know what? That ref is running over with some conviction right now. Yeah. He's reaching into his pocket. Let's see what the result is. Yellow. Yeah, the comp player hit the ground hard. Clearly no ball. However, the way he was moving down the field, they had to somehow stop him. Yeah, I thought he got a whole lot of ball, but maybe a little bit of body too. It certainly seemed like he kicked it out. And now the clock continues to run. And Comp will have it in a pretty decent position. Yeah, this is the rough. 
looks good. Yeah, the ref should keep track of this. Yeah. yeah, he does. <laughs> it's right in front of the goal. Loveland hits the ground. Dad Morris. Deflection takes it to Bagden. Barrington. And that'll be taken away. Every time the ball gets cleared away like that, it's taken off valuable seconds. Yep, Morris doing a great job to put it back to the middle of the field, but right to a comp player. Frontier will get that call. They need a whistle. Yeah, they're still stopping them. And now there's some shoving going on in the box. So now the clock will be stopped, and the ref is going to have a little meeting, which I'm sure won't serve any purpose whatsoever. That as a player walking into one of these games, you nod your head, you look at the ground, yeah. and then you walk back and keep doing whatever it was yeah. you were before. I mean, none of these guys are going to do something stupid. They know how important every moment is right now, but they're still going to play physical and suck. And a lot of time just came off before they finally stopped it. Yeah, about 30 seconds. He said six seconds up. I see you. half of the field for the last few minutes. The whistles in this half have certainly escalated. Yeah. It seems like there's no real flow in the game right now. some complaints from the frontier sideline that the comp player was moving the ball up. I don't think it really makes a huge they difference. They are just stalling all day. Bagden will look to put it up. Maybe give his teammates a chance. Now they go out of bounds. Definitely seeing some major stall tactics from the comp cults, which I'm sure you know, the frontier players might be doing if they were in the other situation up 1-0. Seriously. It's a strategy, as annoying as it is. I think every single team does it. This World Cup, you watched France do it mercilessly to Croatia. Yeah. Or, you know, they just love tossing the ball up to themselves <laughs> before they throw it. <laughs> and Frontier will regain possession on the, on the goal kick. Yeah, Gronky, Gronky has to hustle after that ball. Nine and a half minutes to play here. Gets it up to Loveland, plays it in. Off a couple deflections, finds its way out. Barrington's gonna run and try to get in the corner. I believe it'll be a frontier throw-in. So Barrington will take that throw-in. Man, the crowd is just ready to erupt. The 
Frontier is able to put one away. Yeah, the anticipation of a goal is huge right now. There's a throw by Wankus. Wankus plays it in. Oh, it's Bagden. Bagden. Going in. And Bagden will take the call, even though it appeared that he was going for the ball. And everyone is absolutely. And Bagden will get booked for that. Wow. That is unbelievable. Wow. He, I mean, you could see that his head was pointed up. He was not looking at the keeper. Yeah, I mean, they both went for the ball. That's a collision. That's, that's natural. The contact went both ways. And Bagden has to be subbed out because of that card, which with eight minutes left, it's going to really hurt this Frontier squad. Yeah, Connor's saying he was straight up. I don't know how they can make that call, and everyone is absolutely ups angry right now. Gotta anticipate some stoppage time here after this game. Yep, and we know that the ref, the ref's the one who stops the game. There's no buzzer, it's just his whistle. So however much time he just decides to add on, add on to the end of it, is how much we play with. That call though just doesn't make a lot of sense. The ref's losing control of this one a bit. Certainly. And the fans and the bench for Frontier are not happy. Evan Horton was screaming. Bagnell sub right back in. Yep, and Barrington not happy with that call. <laughs> Looked like both players were going up and one just happened to hit the ground. And we've got under seven minutes to go here. <laughs> and Comp is enjoying milking as much clock as possible. If you're Frontier, you just got to gain possession. for a foul. And I'm sure Comp will milk a more clock. Just get the feeling that Frontier's lost their composure a little bit here. Hard to blame them, but without a focused head on your shoulder, it's hard to really play your best. So Frontier getting Venegas and Bagden back out there. Wooly and Loveland will come off. Maneski. Big boot. Trying to get it going up the field. It's Vegas. We've got a chance. Bagden with the shot. Oh my goodness. What a shot by Bagden. He gets it on goal with a nice save over the top of the net by the keeper. Yeah, so Frontier will now have a corner. What an exciting game we've got tonight, folks. Barrington's going to put it in. And it's up. It's in. Wakeus trying to kick it. And that'll be sent out. And he grabs it, sends it back in the middle. Frontier absolutely able to clear it. On the offensive end right now. What a shot by Bagden there, but just couldn't find the back of the net because of the keeper. Oh, oh and Frontier player just gets laid out. And you're not going to call a card on that? It seems a comp player had anticipated that he was going to kick it. 
and kept his momentum going forward after the Frontier player. Had yeah, four stopped. minutes to go. The clock is going to stop because of an injured player. And you really wonder, how is that not a card in the last play was? I mean, where, where do they decide? Where do they draw the line here? Yeah, this logic seems to certainly have a flaw in it. Frontier player slow to get up. And I believe that's Sam Felton Emmerich. Yes, I believe so. Yeah, Felton Emmerich's blindsided on that play. Definitely shaking up a little bit. Loveland checks in at the halfway mark. And if that's not a card, I don't know what the hell is. And he'll be walked off with the help of his coach. Nice ovation from the fans. Yeah, Felton Emmerich's played a solid role in defense thus far. Faced a little bit of adversity early on with that first goal, but has totally recovered and kept comp scoreless since then. Loveland checks back in four minutes ago. All the Frontier players now standing. A huge kick out. <laughs> and they're gonna call another foul on Frontier. As if you haven't heard that a hundred times already this half. And Comp will, again, try to milk the clock. Yep, look at them there, just tossing it around, giving it some kicks. I don't know how the ball ended up up there. <laughs> <laughs> Foul was in the box. Oh, yeah, you got to adjust the shin guards. I mean, if they really want to waste time, I don't know why they keep pounding him. They can just give it to his teammates right there. He waste some time himself. Kiss chasing it down. Man, we're trying to keep it in. Three minutes to go right now. Khan making a substitution. Doing whatever they can to take some time off the clock. Morris playing a great game in the back so far. Able to clear that one out. Compo just send it in as far as they can. Give Frontier as much trouble. Oh, just poor touch by Wanka said. So. Gotta try to get it going. Yeah, Frontier really struggling to get it out of their own half right now, which they have to do. And the whistle will blow again. And so the clock is now on the ref's wrist. As we hit the two minutes. Yeah, stoppage time. You think there should be a lot of it? Yeah, I definitely expect so. Another foul on Frontier on a contested header. And everyone here is up in arms. It seems as soon as the comp bench started going foul, the ref was a And as a ref, you really have to make sure you're not getting influenced by anybody. Well, I think the comp bench enjoyed that call. I don't think anyone else here did, though. <laughs> no. I mean, you think if it's a contested header, even if one guy goes down harder than the other, you, you just can't flag it or blow the whistle. That's a big punt. Beer. Brown has a chance for a counter. That was a big kick.
Jock's trying to get it through. Yeah, it's really getting hung up on that side right now. Frontier with limited time. Oh, almost a chance. And so the ball will be sent back the other way and Frontier will have to work it up again. Hopefully they have enough time to do so. game and Jimmy Comp will be Moriarty League champs. Frontier will finish in second place. And some words. Yeah, a lot of words. Right now. A lot of tension here. You hate to see a game end like this. Each side yelling at each other. Yeah, get ready for this handshake. Yeah. <laughs> What an exciting game. Yeah, Comp clearly fired up. Frontier is fired up as well. Although you have to recognize that there might have been some questionable, questionable calls by the officials all night long. Frontier only has themselves to blame. I mean, three or four really great chances, and they just couldn't put it in the back of the net tonight. Yeah, and that's the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. And they're definitely going to be some what-ifs after this game, but they've really just got to forget about it after tonight and look forward to the postseason because that is the only thing that matters right now. And a disappointing night and a disappointing end to the home careers of seven great players, but we'd still like to congratulate them and recognize all they've done for the program here at Frontier. But yeah, the Red Hawks are going to have to recover from this one and get ready for the postseason. Yeah, this was a great battle all game. Um, for us especially, uh, being able to talk about it and watch two great teams duke it out and one team effectively and rightfully be the winner. Yeah, and as always, shout out to Frontier Community Access Television for all they do to cover our school sports and other local events. Uh, for the team in the booth, I'm Alex. And I'm Carson. See you later. Good night. <laughs>